Prepare for an irresistible Thanksgiving meal at Whole Foods Market. Pick up an organic fresh whole turkey at the everyday low price of $3.99 per pound. Pro tip, shop today for the best selection. Or simply let Whole Foods Market cater your holiday with an elevated spread including gourmet turkey, sides like truffled parmesan mashed potatoes, delicious desserts, and more. With holiday wine starting at $7.99, Whole Foods Market has Thanksgiving covered. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. When it comes to quality sleep, Ashley has you covered with top mattress brands at winning prices and with special financing options available. You can snooze now and pay later. Plus, your mattress purchase helps give the gift of better sleep to children in need and U.S. Special Operations Forces. Visit your local Ashley store or shop online today and make every snooze count. Financing is subject to credit approval. See store or ashley.com for details. Welcome to True Crime Garage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Nick, and with me this week and almost every week is a man that truly believes the smoker you drink, the player you get, he is the captain. And this week, I'm barely with you. It's good to be seen and good to see you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Today we are bound to keep on riding because we have Midnight Rider Robust Porter in the fridge from the Piedmont Brewery and Kitchen where they crank out the inspired beers and modern smokehouse favorites down in Macon, Georgia. Garage grade, four and a quarter bottle caps out of five. And the road will go on forever thanks to our good friends right here. Cheers to David in San Clemente, California, who says, so many douche canoes and so little time. And a big shout out to Allison in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And here's a high five to Norma in Alpharetta, Georgia. And a big we like your jib to Joe and Jackie in Walsall, UK. Next up, we have Andreas in Gothenburg, Sweden. And last but certainly not least, we have Ryan and Alyssa in New Haven, Connecticut. Everyone we just mentioned went to TrueCrimeGarage.com and donated to this week's beer fund. And for that, we thank you. And make sure you head over to iTunes and give us a five-star review. And that is enough of the business. All right, everybody, gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. Can you explain to me what kind of experience that is to be up there searching for your sister? It's it's hard to put in words. Um, I definitely get some, I get a certain feeling every time I go up to the area. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to explain the feeling that I get. But I remember the first time I went up, not the first time, but one of the one of the early times I went up. And Kathleen, my older sister Kathleen and I went to the tree, uh, the ribbon tree where the Saturn was found. And we did it at 730. We were trying to replicate the conditions. And I just kind of wanted to like put myself in the same position that she would have been. Think about what I would have done. And I like in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, like I'm talking to her. I'm like, Mara, okay, the car, the car the airbags just went off. Um, the windshield's cracked. This bus driver stopped and asked me if I want the police to come. I'm freaking out. What am I going to do? Am I going to run up the road? Why, why do you, why, why do you think she didn't just get in the bus with Butch? I, and that's another question. I don't know. Like, I don't know why. I mean, mm. 
I think she was, I think Butch came up upon her quickly before she was able to figure out a, what her plan was going to be. Right. I think she needed some time to like f- get her bearings. I mean, her windshield was cracked. She may have even hit her head. I've always wondered if you thought she would take off running. I think she, maybe. Because I, I've been friends with a, a lot of long distance runners. And when they tell you that they're going out for their daily run, they're not going out for three miles. They no. might go out for 15. And so for her or anybody with her capabilities to be able to take off in a moment's notice and, and, and go, well, uh, yeah, I didn't want that guy to help me. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe if I just run up the road, I'll find a gas station or something. Yeah. And the other thing was that night was pretty cold. I, th- I think it was 26 degrees. Um, and it was 7.30 on February, so it was dark. Right. Very dark. Um, but, I mean, is is that even a possibility or that she would take off uh, running or? Yeah, so I've, I've thought about this. I've had, I've had a lot of time to think about <laughs> different things. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's one of the thing is, things I think about often. And I, I try to put myself in her shoes back then. So that area, Tamara in 2004 was not this sketchy shady area. She loved that area. When we went up there camping twice a year, we never ran into sex offenders. We never ran into people that were trying to hurt us or kidnap us. Everything was positive. So she's up in this area and she's got these mountains and it's snow and just, she was in a, you know, a a good space. Um, or may, I think she was in a good space. She just right. wanted to clear ahead and um, get this reinstatement fee taken care of or whatever the reason is. And so she wasn't, I don't think she was afraid. She was pretty fearless actually. And so I think she could have said, you know what? I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to run down the street and figure this out. So it's possible that she could have thought that she could have done that. Do you believe she was drinking and driving? Again, I don't know. Maybe. Um, Is that something that she did before that you knew about? I mean, I don't... I mean, we're talking about a 21-year-old, so of course I know that she drank. Um, I don't think she would have been that reckless to try to to get hammered and drive that road. So I don't think she was hammered, but did she have anything to drink? Maybe. Was she drunk? I don't know. Right. So we know she stopped at the ATM, and we know that she bought booze, right? Yes. What booze do we know that she bought? Because that's where it gets very complex to me. So she's telling her teachers in school, hey, I'm going to be gone. It's not even certain that she's saying she's going to be gone for a week, right? She's just saying, I'm going to be gone. There's a family emergency. And then so she goes to the ATM. Well, the ATM kind of makes some sense because back in the day, you couldn't pay a lot of those tickets online. And if you, most of the time um, at DMVs or BMVs, you had to pay in cash. So th- that kind of makes sense. Yeah. But um, the buying it, the booze, it, like a, a decent amount of booze doesn't make a lot of sense to me because even if she's just spending one day there, you know, I'm going to spend one day there. I'm going to pay my ticket. Then I'm going to go to my father's house. Was your father the kind of person that you could show up with bottles of booze and be like, hey, dad, I got bo- bottles of booze. Let's have a party, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, my dad, he wouldn't have cared, but that it was my mom's house. So my parents were divorced. So right. um, I keep but calling my mom your dad's would, house, but yeah. Yeah, I know. No, that's no problem. Um, but my, my mom, nobody in my family would have been like, would have been upset that she had booze. Um, no. Um, but what I can say is what was, fu- what was left in, in the car. So we, we do know that she went to the liquor store, um, in r- around UMass and we, the police have a, a receipt of what she purchased. 
Um, and then I do know what was left in the vehicle. Um, and so there was a box of Franzia wine that was opened um, in the back seat uh, behind the driver's seat. There was a 12 pack of sky blue wine coolers. Um, and then this is where people get, people have gotten this wrong for 16 years, but people said she bought um, Bailey's, which is partially true. She didn't buy Bailey's, but she only bought one of those little nips. Right. Um, those little $2, $1 nips of Bailey. Um, so she didn't have a full bottle of, of Bailey's. So without saying too much, that's what was left in the car. So is there other things that were left in the car that you think are helping law enforcement and the family with the investigation? Yes. And there was other things not left in the car. Right. So items, items possibly from the booze list that weren't found in the car. Yes. Okay. That's interesting. What what does the booze mean to you? Uh, it means that um, mudslides were her favorite drink of choice. Or no, um, black Russians. White Russians. Is it white Russians? This is a drinking <laughs> show. Know. This is a drinking show. <laughs> All Julie. I know is it's not good for CrossFit. It's too much sugar <laughs> and it's going to affect my friend time. So I can't have it. <laughs> this is why you have a clean room. Um, no, but what I mean by it is I'm going, anybody, why would you buy a certain level of booze? Yeah. So what I'll, what I will say is that she did some of the booze that was left in the car was purchased previously. So it was just booze that she had. Yeah, so just like extra booze. <laughs> and when you don't have a lot of money and you're a college kid and you've got some extra booze and you're trying to go on this trip, why buy more? Just just use up the what you got. A- any thought in your head that she was with somebody? Uh, I'd, I'd be very upset if she was and that person hasn't said anything, not a single word to anybody in 16 years. Yeah, because when, when I've showed... Um, or broke down some of the, again, not a lot of the speculation from what happened before the wreck or speculation after the wreck, but just this is what we know from the actual crash site. And then you have a a neighbor calling in 911, and they have reported about this man smoking, which people have come up with different speculations that it was a light on her cell phone. But every investigator that I've, brought that up to has said well i want to know who was smoking by the car and i said well i think most people have looked into that and they've come up with explanations but just because some people on the internet came up with some explanations doesn't mean that there wasn't a guy smoking by that car that night yeah i agree with you and it's actually one of the few pieces of actual evidence that we have because in the dispatch log it says man smoking a cigarette right in the dispatch log yeah and so and and so then we pe- can come up go ahead i was gonna say then people then state well that she kind of changes her, her story later and i go well isn't the most accurate story the one that she told and what they wrote down immediately th- that'd be logical you'd think so i mean we don't have much evidence in this case we don't have uh, we're not privy to much much evidence uh, but that is one thing that's in black and white that, so I say, you know, I say, I don't think she was with somebody for the entire trip. Um, but maybe when the accident happened, somebody showed up smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Somebody could got out of their car. Somebody could have parked their car for a second, got out, walked up smoking a cigarette. I mean, there's multiple podcasts just about your sister there's books been written about your sister what's your initial thought when that stuff is happening well my initial thought is i'm thrilled i'm thrilled that that my sister has the amount of attention that she does have i'm thrilled and i'm i know that 
not every missing person case gets the attention that Mara has gotten. Where, where I start to become less thrilled is when the motivation behind some of these people kind of takes a turn for more towards the selfish side um, and away from actually trying to find Mara. Listen, I will talk to anyone. I will help anyone. I will answer any questions if it will help find Mara. But to entertain some of the ridiculous theories based on no evidence whatsoever, uh, to crucify my poor dad, um, to just drag people through the mud because they may have once looked at Mara, you know, in a random room one, one time, it's just not right. So then there's been a- some allegations against Bill, Bill Roush, which was Mara's boyfriend. There's been some accusations against him and he is going to be facing a trial and it seems like his life went in maybe not such a great direction after the disappearance of your sister. Has that stuff changed your opinion on how he should have been looked at? Well, uh, what I'll say is my opinion of Bill has never changed um, from when I first met him. I, I stated that opinion. Um, most people know that that's my opinion. Um, but that, that opinion was based on his actions when he was um, a young 20, 21, 22, however, however old he was. Right. Um, do I think he physically harmed Mara? No, because I don't have any evidence of that. I She never once said, hey, Bill is abusive towards me. Um, and I've even told Bill this directly, uh, that if, if I thought that he had hurt Mara, I, I would, I, you know, I just, I said, I would have hurt you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I met you and, and I know that you could probably hurt Bill. <laughs> yeah. And I'm probably going to get crucified for that. But I mean, I just, I, and, and Bill knows, Bill knows me. I've known Bill for 20 years. Um, I, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge. I don't know how to interpret charge sheets or any of that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't want to speak about the, the mistress or the affair, the current uh, situations. Um, but what I will say is that I, I'm, I don't consider anyone cleared and I, I encourage and, and, want people to look at everyone. Look at me. Uh Look at, I mean, no one's, no one's cleared, uh, until we find Mara. I've always thought Bill should be looked at pretty hard. I mean, come on. The husband, the boyfriend always did it, but it's hard to put him in New Hampshire. Impossible. Impossible. He would look at his phone records. He was, he was in Oklahoma. He was in the army. You can't just you can't just go where you want to go. Could he have could he have been off post in Oklahoma? Yeah, of course, certainly. Mm-hmm. But could he have been in New Hampshire? There's no way. Right. So then it it just leads to this idea that that possibly wherever she was going, uh, he he met up with her later. Has been the new speculation. Yeah, well, that that's hard for me to believe because I actually know what happened when he was there and right during the search. He was with my dad and my dad gave him specific directions, "Hey, I'm going to go meet with law enforcement or I'm going to go search this area. I I need you and and your dad, Bill's dad, Bill senior, mm-hmm. um to go check out this bus stop or gas uh, station in Maine because my dad couldn't be going to Maine and Vermont and almost up to the Canadian border because he had to be there um, to talk to people that may need to identify something of hers or right. um, he just needed to be there. Um, so he would send Bill on these missions to go check out different things, pass out flyers. 
But to my knowledge, I mean, Bill was with someone. He he flew in. He didn't even have a car. Yeah, well, and not just with somebody who's normally with his parents. But I do like what you said. I, I, I think until she is found, everybody should be looked at. You know, simple as that. And if they have nothing to uh, hide and people actually do the work, base those theories off of actual evidence, then then everybody can be looked at again and and everybody should welcome that as well. Because it seems like we have a seven-minute window from the time she crashed to the time that the police showed up and and we have a girl gone. It's it's pretty hard to wrap your head around that and, and the fact that nobody, everyone looked away. I mean, there was plenty of neighbors around and everyone looked away at the exact time that Mara disappeared off the face of the planet. Um, but I mean, as far as, as far as Bill's concerned and, and theories are concerned, um, I want to just touch on this notion that I have a narrative to, um, push. And I, I always wonder about that because what would my narrative be? Uh What, what narrative would I possibly push? Like, Am I protecting someone that I think hurt or harmed or has my sister? Right. Is that my narrative? Well, you're still mad about being the ball girl. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you had to go back I'm to sorry. that. I'm sorry. You know, just when you think we're going to be serious, I got to throw. No, but it's, yeah. it's serious. But that's, that's truthful. And I, I think, like you were saying, calling out certain people for having – motives for why they're talking about your sister's disappearance, why they possibly wrote about your sister's disappearance. And, and then for people to accuse you of having some motive. Yeah. And like, like I said, like I'll, I want, I want this. I want people to talk about Mara. I want people to write about Mara. I want to be on podcasts. I want her name to be on I want it to be on every major news network right now and just put a picture up there and be like, Mara Murray missing. Of course I want that. That would help, hopefully help someone remember something or remember seeing her or something. It's when you're, you're just wildly speculating to make a good story. Prepare for an irresistible Thanksgiving meal at Whole Foods Market. Pick up an organic fresh whole turkey at the everyday low price of $3.99 per pound. Pro tip, shop today for the best selection. Or simply let Whole Foods Market cater your holiday with an elevated spread including gourmet turkey, sides like truffled Parmesan mashed potatoes, delicious desserts, and more. With holiday wine starting at $7.99, Whole Foods Market has Thanksgiving covered. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you look forward to the holidays? Maybe you struggle with seasonal blues. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or even anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash garage today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash garage. Dreaming of overseas adventures or connecting more deeply with family from afar? Rosetta Stone bridges the language gap. I've tried others, but Rosetta Stone's immersive lessons and voice feedback technology are game changers. Dive into 25 languages by learning intuitively, just like when you were a kid. And here's the holiday sparkle. Grab a lifetime membership now and save 50%. Gift yourself the world. Head to rosettastone.com now and save 50%.
Yeah, so you you want people talking about your sister. You want people talking about her disappearance. And pretty early on, you guys were contacted um, by an author that was interested in writing about your sister and her disappearance, which something like that could really create conversation and get people talking and and really be a um, a good tool to utilize in, in searching for your sister. Yeah, and and initially initially we were and we were intrigued and we we're like wow this 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 could be this could be huge um but also part of me was thinking well the story's not over um right so it's ha- it's going to be half a book unless in writing the book we can find we can find some evidence or find actually find mara and so that was ho- that was hopeful for us and we go through these ups and downs of just clinging on to some something to to keep us going. Right. Um, but when we we started looking into it, and we we didn't just say, "Oh yeah, let's let's do this." We we actually do some research, um, and we researched um, the individual and found out that some of the previous um, I'll say projects he was a part of the family, one particular family didn't have the greatest things to say. Did your family reach out to their family and say, hey, we were contacted by this individual? And- um, I believe, I think it may have been Helena. Helena was is my dad's cousin. She, um, she passed away, unfortunately, um, but she was instrumental at the beginning of keeping the case going. Um, I believe she was the one that was initially contacted. I could be wrong on that, um, but she did most of the legwork on it and was a little skeptical. And that's kind of where it kind of opened our eyes to to look at who are these people coming out of the woodwork. Like I don't know, I I don't know this person at all. Even if that little speculation just becomes, hey, well, maybe not right now. It doesn't yeah. mean n- not ever, but maybe not right now. Yeah. But it seems like some of these people then also got offended. Yeah. And then that became, that became, that became a story. There's a storyline right there. Oh man, the family doesn't want a book. Like, no, (laughs) we do. We want all the publicity we can get. Like, did you see my dad screaming at the steps of the courthouse, New Hampshire for the FBI? Like that's not what, what a dad who's hiding things does. It's just, no, yeah, you don't, you don't scream at law enforcement enforcement if you're trying to hide something um right so it was you know it was just us saying okay we we want this but this may not be the particular approach that we want to go with or the particular um person i don't know if we didn't know the person and we didn't know if the same thing was going to happen to us as what had happened to other people that had interactions with the person i mean it has to be so odd on some level though that your sister goes missing and you're very close with her. And it's, I mean, you can look up all these lists and it's always on these lists of either most mysterious disappearance or internet crazed cases that has to be odd on some level. It's very odd, especially, especially for me. Because I am, I'm pretty much as introverted as you can get, and awkward, and I don't like this spotlight. I don't. I'm not the most articulate person. I'm not the worst, but I'm I'm not, definitely not the best. And and you're not the best at free throws. And and I and I'm a ball girl, and I'm just yeah. It's it's not what I want, but I've realized that I have to do this. It's hard for me. It is. It is hard for me um, to force myself to do some some of these things that I normally would would not do. I mean, yes, I was in the military. Yes, I was a an officer in the army, and I had to do these things. But it was structured, and I had a reason, and you know, I had training, and most of the things that happen, it's learn as you go. There's no guidebook. Um, nothing can prepare you for this. I'm still learning, um, right? And it's it's not easy. How, how often do you feel like? Because we met at CrimeCon, and 
and it was like all weekend. Oh, you got to meet Julie. You got to meet Julie. And I, I kept on thinking like you were like the Wizard of Oz or something like, you know, <laughs> like when is she going to appear? Um, <laughs> and then you appear and I'm, of course, I'm like, oh, great. She's a she's a stoic. So uh, I get real awkward around stoic because I talk more. Uh, so anytime I I meet uh, uh, somebody that talks less than me, then I, it's just off to the races and. But but I was thinking, um, cause like a couple people, I said, yeah, well, I'm hoping to meet meet Julie here, and um, talk to her about her sister, and people kept on asking me what I was going to say, and I thought that was strange because I was like, I'm not meeting her at a funeral or a wake, but I've also seen family members that are trying to get their cases heard by people and get the spotlight on those cases. Um, where I've heard people talk to them as if it's like a funeral. Does does that make any sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And I'm just a regular person. I mean, well, clearly you're not, you, uh, you do (laughs) CrossFit. So (laughs) yeah, I have my little, my little quirks, but, I mean, um, I wish people would would just come up to me and talk about about normal stuff. And you know, this is not new to me. So a lot of times when people first find out about it, because um, there are a few people left that don't that have never heard of Mar Murray. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to change that. Uh, but for people that that just hear about the case, yeah, you're right. They come up to me and they they they're like, I feel so sorry for you. And it's like, I've lived this, this is my life for 16 years. Like, um, it's not new for me. Um, and I, and I appreciate them cause I know it's hard for them too. Like they don't know what to say. Um, but I want people to know. And if you, you know, you see me walking around at crime con or whatever, and you have a question about, you know, the, the, London Dairy ping or the red truck or all the different crazy, um, things we have going on in this case, just just ask me about that and i love that i love and i love to talk about mara yeah. but i mean does some sometimes does it just hit you in a different way i mean like when they showed you the atm footage of her yeah oh yeah absolutely like um after the oxygen show i had to go on to dr oz um not i didn't have to i was fortunate enough that he was going to cover the case and I was thrilled to do it. And I was scared to death to do it. And, you know, here I am like this tough person and I just lost it. Like I normally keep it together, but I couldn't like, I just lost it. And I'm like, I was embarrassed, but I'm like, no, I'm not embarrassed. It's like, it's just, it was real. And it you can, you can see it's real. And I let kind of let that stoicism go for a, like a minute and then you'll see me like get, get it back together. And yeah. So there are definitely times where things hit me. Like what hits me the most is when I am with my dad and I see him um, talk about Mara or like I see his reaction to things. That's the hardest for me. Um, And a a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, all the time um, people forget that my mom lived through this as well. And, yeah. and she passed away, um, to cancer and, um, you know, she was fighting her own battle with the cancer treatments while her daughter is missing. And she wasn't able to go up there and be as present, um, as she, obviously she would have liked. Uh, and so it was very hard for me to see my mom go through that and, eventually pass away without ever knowing what happened to her daughter. Yeah. My, my parents had a, not a good divorce. Right. But if, but yeah. if something like this happened, I think they would want to be able to support each other. It, so yeah. I feel like that she probably not only about not being able to ser- search, but probably seeing the effect that it had on your father, because like, we, you know, we've been covering cases for four or five years, and that's the stuff that gets me all the time. Is like, there to me, there's a, there is evidence out there too, and just the way 
the way in which people say things and there's been videos of your father that have just just crushed me you know and to think i I don't even know i don't know what's like like how that would feel to be him um and just not have answers and not only that but it just doesn't feel like in this case um it's almost like they they viewed your father in a negative way because he was wouldn't shut up about it and it doesn't seem like they've been that um cooperative i don't know if that's the correct terms to use um but it seems like almost like initially law enforcement was putting up barriers and i don't know if that has changed since the the documentary came out yeah well i i'm i'm happy to say that i did have a couple um sit downs with chuck west who is from the cold case unit the lead detective um and he like i said before he has shared some information with me um but if my dad would have just accepted accepted whatever law enforcement said or accepted their you know the results of their searches and never went up every weekend by himself then this case would would I wouldn't be on here with you I mean this is all this is because of my right. dad that we're still talking about um a missing girl 16 years later is there anything new that has come out that anybody should know about there I can tell you there are there is a lot happening um, behind. But you the can't scene. tell me any I, of it, can you? <laughs> well, no, I can. I mean, I can. T- <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I don't need to. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of it they might have asked you <laughs> to not share with other people. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, people think the case is dead, and you know, the online community feels a certain way. I appreciate the online community, but the actual case is, is moving and there's things happening and there's people that are a part. So, so much a part of this case that have no presence on social media that you would fall over um, to know that how hard some people are working behind the scenes and they're, you don't even know their names um, because that's because they're in it to find Mara. Um, not to say that people that who you do know their names aren't, um, but there, there is a small group that just wants no attention and just wants to help solve this case. Um, so I say that to, to say that, um, things are happening all the time. I spend hours on this every day, responding to emails, um, talking to people. I call my dad every single day. Um, and we talk about the weather and then we talk about, his flowers. And then we talk about Mara every single day. Um, there are some things that, that I'm not able to talk about right now, but I will be able to talk about in the future. Um, but it's definitely things that are giving us hope. But, but anything new that you can share? Well, um, one of the new things is, uh, in the previous searches that we did with the GoFundMe money that was raised by, um, after the, I forget which crime con it was, but Maggie, Tim and Lance put together a GoFundMe. Um, and initially I said, I don't want to be the financial custodian of any of that type of things. Cause I don't want people to say the Murrays are going on Disney vacations with, yeah. I mean, just ridiculous stuff. I mean, you know how the internet is. Um, so we use that money to do several different searches of several different properties. Um, many of which, Tim and Lance and other people have talked about on their podcast. So I'm talking about ground penetrating radar. I'm talking about cadaver dog searches, things like that. Um, But we weren't able to do were um, testing of, of those samples that we collected. So I just recently pushed a, another um, GoFundMe out there and I'll send this to you. Um, And that is to get those samples tested. Yeah, so we we've got plenty of samples. Now we just needed to take it to the next phase, which is testing. And we actually found um, a location that w- is going to do some of this testing for us at a fraction of the cost. Um, and that's kind of the the catalyst behind the new GoFundMe. The other thing is 
people ask me all the time, what can I do? What can I do? And I always tell them, well, just talk about Mara and which people are doing. And, and I appreciate that. But there are some people that, you know, maybe are in a different part of the country or even the world. Right. I mean, this case is huge. Um, and so it gives them an opportunity to feel like they're contributing um, in even a small way. Yeah, so if you guys would like to donate, we'll put a link on our social media, on our Twitter and Facebook, at True Crime Garage. And a lot of times in these cases, you know, there are people that are wonderful, and they come forward and they want to offer their services or their time to help out the family. But a lot of times these families need things that can only be covered with funds, with actual paper money. And that is things like travel cost, whether it be that they need to get experts involved, there's a million different reasons why that would be important. So anything that you can do to help would be especially wonderful in this case. It's been 16 years now. We're looking for answers. Yeah, and we were able to donate 500 bucks from the show, from the beer fund, uh, because of all you filthy animals. So what are your thoughts uh, after hearing the interview with Julie? Yeah, so... Obviously, this is people. People don't know how we kind of did this. Uh, some people know that I was gone for a while and covering some cases in Florida, and we've been quite busy. And you were able to sit down with Julie, and she's first of all, thank you to her. Yeah. There are a lot of people that like would like to speak with her, and thank you for choosing our show to be one of the shows that you come on to to help clear up some of the things, misconceptions, and also really just to provide more of the story of who her sister was, is, and what was going on in her world at this time leading up to her disappearance. Because with this case, there are so many questions about what would have been Mara's motives, even if they were totally innocent right. about what she was doing at the time when she went missing. I mean, you you could cut this case a hundred different ways and there's speculation and there are things that you could suggest point to your theory or point to what you think happened here. I found some of the things that she said to be interesting. I, I don't know that it cleared up a lot of the questions that I have in this case. And I don't know that Julie would be able to do that. Just they're, they're living different lives. They're, right. they're, they're not, walking hand in hand through this world together at this time in Mara's life. The question always will be, why was she in that area and why did she go there? Now, obviously that might not have been her destination, but that's where she ended up for whatever reason. Where was she going? I think that the, the thing that she pointed out in the interview, and this is something that you told me about a while ago, and I don't know when it became public knowledge about this reinstatement fee for her driver's license. I like that theory. I like it for several reasons. It sounds like it, it's, it's a plausible theory. It's a logical theory. And it's also, it sounds like Julie is providing us with information that would require Mara to need to actually have the, the use of a driver's license at that time. I mean, Anybody who lives on a college campus, you lose your driver's license. You don't got the money to reinstate it. You don't got the ability to do so. You don't want to ask dad for help. I get it. You you can just figure out a way to get around on that college campus. It sounds to me like there was an absolute need for her to have this driver's license. But then I run into the some of the simple questions that come along with that theory. One, where did she lose the license from or where was it being threatened to be taken away from why is this just coming out recently you know that that's the type of thing that there's a paper trail and and i i'm a little confused on the details none of you know i don't have any of the details from from our inver interview or from the the conversation that was had regarding that that portion or, or, or the theory itself. Yeah. And to break it down, this ticket theory simply is that she got the ticket on vacation. She had to appear in court within 30 days. She did. So 
there was because she was speeding it was a 99 and a 65 that, that's not good bob that's not good bob and why are you so, uh this is a girl that's not good with cars they revoke her license mm-hmm. she is going to have to pay a reinstatement fee it's believed that she would have to pay this reinstatement fee because not every bnv will actually do reinstatement fees so your county might have multiple bnvs but maybe only one location where you can pay that fee. It seems like she would have had to pay that fee in Concord. As I like this theory in it, and I do believe people should spend more time on this theory because there is some logic to it. You pointed out something that I, I find very interesting. Well, I we were talking, and you were filling me in on the details about this reinstatement fee. And look... This is very plausible. I'm not challenging anything that Julie says. I I like her. I've met her too, and I'm thankful that she sat down and spoke with you. Um, I'm also not really challenging. I'm I'm a guy that Captain. You know that this this is pretty rare for me, but I don't really have a theory, uh, one that I'm married to in this case. Uh-huh. As far as Mars case goes, I think that there's some unanswered questions. There's too many loose ends here. But I love these ideas. If we can come up with some information that will, will kind of clue us in and lead us down a different road or to the answers to clear some of these things up, that's great. That's where we need to go as far as podcast, internet sleuthing, all that jazz goes, right? Well, and, and to be clear, Julie says this is a possible reason that she's up there. Again, right. this, this would put her about an hour and a half north of where she would have had to pay the ticket. So it's... I believe the theory is that she was going to go up to an area which she was familiar with, spend the night because obviously after five o'clock, normally a lot of these B and V's close. So go drive a little past, maybe get some booze, maybe stay up there for the night, come back down in the morning, pay the ticket and then go back to your mother's house. I look, and I don't want to, Uh, misquote somebody else's theory that's just what i'm speculating but it's very strange to me that should be an hour and a half uh, right uh, north of of the location of where she had to pay the reinstatement fee especially with not having much money as a college student but again a lot more to dive into with this case right and that's what we were kind of talking about off air just a second ago was that She's she's much further north and not far enough east of where she needs to be if, in fact, that was her destination. Right. And I get, look, a lot of people are going to point out, well, she's traveling at night. You can't go p- pay these fees in the middle of the night. I don't think anybody's disputing that. She very well could have intended to make the drive and then take care of business the following day. She's already told what we do know is she's already told people she's going to be gone for some days Right. So she very well could have gone to take care of this during the daylight hours the next day and then made her way back. It's it's very curious to me, though, that she's so much further north than she needs to be. And if you were going to make that, look, if if that was her intention, this is a business trip. This is for her future. This is part of her future. If she goes and purchases a new car. To get registered on that car, she's going to need to have a valid driver's license. Right. And if she thinks or is being told that her license has been revoked, you don't have a valid driver's license. I also can't recall off the top of my head what years, and I know it varies by state, when you need to go and apply for your license again or renew your license. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, she's only a handful of months, a couple of months away from another birth date. So, There could be a multitude of reasons why she's worried about her driver's license that may have been revoked. The problem is she's an hour, hour and a half north, an hour and a half north of where she needs to be to reinstate that license. The other thing that's curious to me, too, is the believed phone calls that she made prior to leaving or Internet searches she made prior to leaving were all for places in Vermont and the quickest route to where her car crashed and from UMass of Amherst would be up route 91. And that kind of, that kind of trails right along the, the Vermont, New Hampshire border. There's a big part of me that wonders if Vermont 
was actually the definite the destination, regardless of how close it was to the state line. I also find something curious here too. If she was going to make this a leisurely business trip, why does nobody else know about it? And I, and I get why Fred doesn't know about it. Okay, you're trying to get a car. You're you are daddy's girl. You're not you're not doing anything wrong. But he doesn't need to know everything. You are an adult. And he might be helping you get this car. Maybe you don't want to give him one more reason to not assist you getting this car. I get that. Where where I'm going with this is, to me, she's buying enough alcohol for a party for more than one person, for more than just herself. Mm-hmm. If that if if we can all get on board with that, who is that other person? Where are these other people? And I also get the situation that you said, maybe she's going to go get this reinstated the next day and then make it over to her mother's house and stay there for a night or visit with mom for a little bit and then make her way back to college. Again, where is that communication with mom? Maybe she was going to make that at a later time, but it, well, it, yeah, what I'm that pointing was out here is considered to be, you know, her home, you yeah. know, where it's like, I drop in on my parents' all, houses all the time. I'm not calling them. If right. I'm in the neighborhood, I drop by. I'm not calling them. Right. Uh, that's still my home. So maybe not. Yeah. But again, why contact your mom and say, well, I got to go pay this ticket. What car are you driving? The Saturn. Ah, I wouldn't do that. Um, and you just think you can make it again. My big question becomes like you, you were saying, it's not only did you go buy booze, but we know we have evidence that there's booze from the prior weekend that she bought. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's old booze plus new booze. That's seems like a lot of booze. Um, that, that's the thing that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And again, I still go back to this uh, smoker by the car, which a lot of people are going to be dismissive of. Uh, but also I think one of the things that I, I really want to put out, you know, a big, um, why can't we all get along argument right now is there's a lot of people in this case that are, that have worked hard and spot spent a lot of time investigating it. And it seems lately they spend more time attacking each other. We might not agree on ideas. We might not agree always on theory theories. And, and me and you don't agree a lot of times with cases, but we still try to show each other a level of respect and there's sometimes that your thoughts have altered my thoughts and to be open to that. And I don't think people understand the harm that it does because by putting out these false accusations against people or just constantly trying to tear each other down, it makes, it turns people away from the case itself and from the fact that there is a girl that's missing and that the family because I've talked to Julie, I, I got to talk to her another two hours and we wish we could have shared that information, but it's information that's really close with law enforcement and they don't want that information out there because it's serious leads that they're following and serious people that they have under a magnifying glass and they don't want to them to know that they're under a magnifying glass. And when they need these experts to come in, they don't want these experts looking on the internet and seeing this case as a joke because it's not a joke. A family is missing their daughter and the family is missing their sister and friends are missing their loved one. And so this childish actions between people I wish would stop because you're making a joke like I said, of a, of a very serious case. Well, thank you to you, Captain, for conducting the interview. A hundred thank yous to Julie for doing the interview. And we want to wish the Murray family the best of luck in their continued search for Mark. For old episodes of True Crime Garage, check us out exclusively on the Stitcher app. And we have a bonus show called Off the Record. You need to check that out as well. Find out more information at truecrimegarage.com. Also on truecrimegarage.com, check out our recommended page where we have recommended books 
documentaries, all kinds of stuff for you to check out. This week, we are recommending to you a fantastic book called Memoir of a Milk Carton Kid. This is the Tanya Nicole Catch story. So check that out. You don't have to write that title down now. Just go to our website, check out the recommended page. Thank you to everyone for tuning in to True Crime Garage this week. Join us back here next week in the garage. Until then, be good, be kind, and don't litter. Prepare for an irresistible Thanksgiving meal at Whole Foods Market. Pick up an organic fresh whole turkey at the everyday low price of $3.99 per pound. Pro tip, shop today for the best selection. Or simply let Whole Foods Market cater your holiday with an elevated spread including gourmet turkey, sides like truffled Parmesan mashed potatoes, delicious desserts, and more. With holiday wine starting at $7.99, Whole Foods Market has Thanksgiving covered. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly.